Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> Good morning. Um, this is uh, the first out of the box track for today. Um, it's called What Symphony Components Can Do For You. And my name is Andreas Hooks. I work for Sense Labs Germany, which is um, Sense Labs is the, the creator of the Symphony framework. And I work as a trainer and a consultant. So, who is who has used Symphony 2? Anyone? Okay. Uh, Symphony 1. Zend. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's a full stack framework. That's what most people know about. Um, and if you have used full stack framework in the past, like Symphony 1, for example, then the image that you possibly have of a full stack framework is something like this. So it's kind of monolithic. It has, uh, can do all the tricks, but it's also a bit tightly coupled. And not only, uh, because in Symphony 2, we have this sentence that we like to use to define what Symphony is. Symphony 2 is a reusable set of standalone, decoupled, and cohesive PHP 5.3 components that solve common web development problems. Um, so what it means is that you can use Symphony perfectly in any 5.3 and upwards project uh, of your own. And that is the point of this talk, because uh, obviously most people attending this conference is have a nice framework of their own. Flow 3 is perfectly capable. And um, so I thought I'd like to show you something, how you can use Symfony not using the whole stack, but bringing Symfony components into legacy code. And the Symfony components are used in quite a few projects. Uh, obviously, Symfony 2 full stack. Um, Silex is a micro-framework based on Symfony. There's Laravel, which is quite popular in the US. Behat, the behavior-driven development tool. A Guzzle, a HTTP client. PHP Unit, Composer. Uh, and there's, there's more, uh, namely those two, uh, Easy Publish and Drupal. And um, OK, so to get into it, it's it's Friday afternoon, and your boss, boss comes to you with a tiny task. And he gives you this old legacy app, you know, uh, that you need to integrate into some kind of modern, modern application. And what it is, is it's really simple. It's a, it's a to-do list application. You can add a task. You can mark tasks as as done, and you can delete those. And then you, say, you, you think to yourself, well, that might be, that's not a problem. I can do that uh, till the afternoon. And then you open up the source code. And it's rather old school. Pretty much everything wrong that can be wrong in a PHP application. Um, PHP mixed with HTML, MySQL, uh, actually, that, that, that application exists, and you can do, well, any kind of injection, cross-site scripting, all you want. So you get a sinking feeling. And what you do, you try to make up a list of what to do. And the list of what to do starts with um, wrapping this legacy mess somehow into something manageable. So you get a, a clean API to the outside. Uh, you want to include some kind of error reporting. Um, you, need, you need a routing system to have a somewhat more flexible application. You want some separation of concerns using MVC. Um, the framework kernel is something I will talk about later, 
You want to make sure it behaves. That means you want to run functional tests on it easily. You want to be able to configure it, and possibly you need command line tools. And so I'm going to use Symfony components for that. Um, most of those uh, will be the core components. There's quite a few components, like somewhere around 25. Uh, we are going to use um, some of the core ones. So the first topic was, was to wrap this. And for that, there's a component called HTTP Foundation that can help us a lot here. What it is, it's a object-oriented interface uh, to HTTP, basically. So it wraps all those super globals that you know from PHP, underscore get, underscore post, underscore cookies, wraps those into an object and provides you with a couple of helper met methods to work with it. Um, that is the simple, quick explanation. And what we can write is, this is just example code, so you could write a legacy wrapper that takes a file name that would be your old PHP file from your legacy app, and uh, that accepts a request and simply executes the controller, um, reads everything that is output by the legacy app into the output buffer, and creates a response object from it. Response object wraps everything that a response can be, so the content body, headers, cookies, and so on. And then you can, once you have done this, once you have, have wrapped your legacy application, you can use a single front controller as a single point of entry. So you else would get rewritten to this, and everything would end up in your app.php, just a made-up name. And the basic workflow is this. You create a request from globals. In this case, you can create a, a request manually. That will be useful later on for functional tests. But right now, we create it from globals. And we execute our wrapper, which will return a response, and then call response sent. And at that point, we have a single front controller that we can integrate into functional tests, for example. Um, if you, again, this is the simplified workflow, you create a request, you do something to generate a response, whatever, in this, at this stage, that is still your pure legacy app, and you send the response. And the URL will still be the same, it will still keep working. So that's our starting point for refactoring. Uh, we've isolated the legacy code, we can now integrate this into a new application, and it's testable, which I'm going to elaborate on later on. So we've checked the first point, and the second would be to make it report. Which brings us to another component called debug, and this debug component can um, simplify your life a lot by uh, integrating um, two things. It's a very simple component. It it's contains an error handler and an exception handler. Optionally, you can use a PSR0 compliant logger, whatever one you like, to, um, to integrate logging into this. And what it does is, first, the error handler will allow you to convert native error into exceptions. So you have a clean error handling scheme. You can use exceptions throughout your application. Additionally, as I said, it accepts the logger. Then there's a, an exception handler that is easily, uh, equally easy to use. Just call exception handler register. Using debug, setting debug to true, will facilitate outputting automatic out output of those stack traces. There's a, simple, uh, there's a simpler template that comes with it. Gives you a readable exception with a stack trace, 
This is a very simple one. And error, error handling with that. And this will also automatically cover native PHP errors for you. You can register both in one go with this single line. So usually what you do when you use this component is just <laughs> this. That's all. Debug enable. Usable in any PHP project. OK. So we've done this. And we continue to the routing. Now, routing is actually split up into two chapters because um, routing consists of matching routes. So there's an incoming request, and I want to match the route to a certain controller. And the second part is when I have a template, I want to be able to generate a URL from a named route. And that's the second part. But between that, we will need templating. So in the first part, we are concerning ourselves with the matching for the routing. And what, what, what does the routing component do? It um, defines routes as patterns that can be matched against a request. I can assign attributes arbitrarily to, to a route. So if a route is matched, then my controller can pull those attributes out of that route. And I have a matcher that matches an incoming URI to that route. In fact, I, I can, the Symfony routing component can match against a lot more stuff than just the URL pattern. You can match against other request attributes as well. But the request pattern is probably the most common way to match in a route. And you can generate a URI from a route object. So how to use this? This is the simplest way to use the router. By the way, this is, um, this is the manual way. Uh, we will later see how we can configure that using YAML or XML. But for now, uh, this is how you can do that in PHP. All you do is you create a route. In this case, I've created a route that still has a path um, like the old file name. So, I'll still be able to run my application because all the old links are, of course, still hard-coded in the legacy code. So I pick my routes to match the old routing. And then I set defaults. Set default is simply a assignment, a key value assignment. And in that case, the, there's, I, I, I pick, I choose to use a key called underscore controller. That is just my re reserved key to store controllers in. And that can be any callable. In this case, it's just a closure that uses the wrapper to execute my old legacy code. And when I work with more routes, I can use a route collection and add my route objects to this assigning them a name. So that would be the list route that lists all the tasks. And then I can use a URL matcher, which is this one, that accepts the routes in a routing context that I can create like this, to match a request. This request variable contains exactly the request object that I've created in my front controller uh, early on. So. What I end up with is a set of parameters. Those parameters are simply an array, an associative array that is the result of my matching process. In this case, I've chosen to have just a, a class name in my, um, as a controller value instead of a, uh, of a closure. The routing component will also add a underscore route key that will contain the name of the route that was matched. I can use that later on to do stuff like menu highlighting, something similar. And I can also have defaults that have nothing to do with the original request that are now part of my routing parameter. So I have a default page, for example, if nothing else was passed. And then I have to somehow determine what controller to use. In this case, it's 
Um, it's a really simple example. I just call my callable. Uh, that's probably not something that you would do in a real-world scenario. In a real-world scenario, you will have probably will have some sort of uh, controller class that will get instantiated. Um, but we'll see later on how we can do that. But so far, we still have our old URL pattern, so it will still work with the legacy code, even if now we have a routing in place. And before we can use those routes to, to generate URLs from it, we need templating. And templating is another Symfony 2 component that is, as all the other component is usable standalone. That means um, if you don't need those routing stuff, if you don't, even if you don't want to use HTTP foundation at all, you still can use the templating standalone. So what does it do? It doesn't even force you to use a certain template language. It's a extensible, simple templating engine. By default, it uses PHP as a templating language. Easy to use, um, easy to implement. Um, it supports escaping and inheritance. So uh, things like cross-site scripting that were problems of the legacy app will be sort of solved. We have inheritance, which will allow us to um, have easy layout replacement. And we have a generic interface to, to replace the rendering engine completely. Um, the component comes with PHP, as I said, but implement, uh, docking on a different rendering engine is just a matter of implementing an interface. That is exactly how Symfony 2 full stack, for example, does it, or other Drupal, for example, um, by adapting it for Twig. So you can switch out your view layer transparently. So take a look back how the old templating worked. And then that's, again, our legacy application. We have our uh, well, standard includes like a config PHP, a header PHP, which would include the upper HTML part. Uh, we have a footer that is included. And we have a lot of other stuff that we don't want to really look about look at. So instead of this, we can now use the Symfony layout engine. And this is a, a file layout called layout.php that can that would be your HTML frame, your layout page. And in that you can define slots. So there's a, there will always be available a variable called view that contains uh, the helpers that you have registered for the templating engine. In this case, we are using the slots helper and call output a slot called content. So far, this doesn't do anything on its own. But once I start implementing my, the templates for my respective controllers. In that case, I have a template for the list controller. Then I can integrate into that, into that layout. So I have a, I call view extend layout.php. And in this case, in, at that moment, I have template inheritance in place. Template inheritance works very similar to PHP inheritance. In PHP, you've got um, a base class with methods and in the child class, you can add methods, you can override methods, and, um, or you can leave methods alone. And in, in the templating component, the slots take the place of those methods. So you have slots that are defined in the layout. In this case, I've defined a slot called content. And I can override that content slot in my child template and specialize the template in that way. So after that, it's very simple PHP output. I've assigned a variable called task to the template, so that can be rendered. Setting up the rendering engine is really easy. It includes a loader part that you can use to 
load templates from several locations. You can, you can replace that loader with a database loader, for example, or something else if you don't want to load your templates from the disk. And once you've configured that, you only need the short template name. So your templates do not, have to, do not need to have a note notion of relation to each other. You can rearrange template directories pretty easily by simply adapting those loaders um, instead of well, having to change path in your, in your templates. In fact, you can make up entirely different naming schemes for this. It don't has to be called something called something something dot PHP. You can make up entirely different naming schemes that will allow you to lo locate templates. So I call render on the templating engine, hand it over the name of the template that I want to render, and give it an array of template variables. So this variable task will be available in the template later on for rendering. And now we have a controller. This is a method of an imaginary controller I've written for this application, but because now I'm in the phase where I'm actually moving code. So far, I've simply done some wrapping. Now I'm moving code over to new controller classes. So there's some business code over here, loading tasks, whatever. And once I've done so, I use the templating engine that is available to the controller, that I've made available to the controller, to render that template and wrap this in a response object, which I can return, which my front controller then can send to the client. And what I pass is not only the, the tasks variable, but also a URL generator that is part of the router object. And I will be able to use that generator to generate my routes. And this name, list, uh, this was mentioned a couple of slides earlier. Um, this is the name of the route object. So I can create, generate routing patterns from the named routes. Okay, that was templating. Now we come back to the routing because the routing setup so far was a bit cumbersome. I mean, um, imagine you have to generate, or you have to define like hundreds of routes. That's not really practical, practical in PHP. So what you can do instead is use something we call the all-in-one router. You can easily build your own custom router using all the uh, single classes, the separate classes that come with the routing component, but there's also a, a out-of-the-box router that is part of that component. It's simply called router. And you create that router by handing it over a file loader. That can be YAML, XML, whatever you like. Uh, in this case, it's YAML because that's a popular format. format. Uh, you, hand, you give it a name of the configuration file you want to load and a cache directory because no matter what format you're using, if it's YAML or XML or even plain PHP, the routing component will compile that down to a single PHP class and be able to cache that so not every request will have to repass all the routing information. Such a routing file could look like this. So defining routes will get much easier in this case. Uh, you simply have your routing names matched to a pattern. The routing component supports having placeholders, that's this curly, curly braces, um, inside your routing patterns that will be available later on to your controller. You can even tie routes to different HTTP methods. So even if we have two routes with the same pattern, like here, um, the one will be called for GET requests and the other will be called for POST requests. 
And then from your single all-in-one router object, you can get at generators and matchers without creating them yourself. So you can use them out of the box as well. After we've matched our routing, we need some code to call our controller because we still end up with parameters and then need something, this is a bit awkward right now, still to call our controller. We will replace that later on with a more automatic solution, which in this case is called a kernel. And the kernel is another component which expands upon the HDB foundation component, integrates us with an event dispatcher to automatically do the, the things we did manually so far. So we have a predefined workflow for handling HTTP requests, for converting a re request into a response. We have events that we can hook into, and we have error uh, logging included optionally if we want to. The setup is, this is the single setup that you need to use the kernel. It's, it's quite simple. You create an event uh, dispatcher and add a router listener. All of this is part of the router listener, uh, the controller solver, so, far, so on, is part of the HTTP kernel package. And you create a new kernel with the dispatcher and the router resolver, and then you have a code that is similar to our original front controller code. We create a request, and this time we just let the kernel handle it, because the kernel will be able to figure out on its own which route to match, which controller to call, which response to generate. And it will do so using this controller resolver. So what is it? It's a simple interface. Um, there's no default controller resolver. You have to create one your own. But it's a simple, in simple interface. It has the first method is called getController, which would return an instantiated controller object. Probably that would be some kind of controller class that has action methods. And the second method is called get arguments, which figures out what arguments to pass to a controller action. That could be, for example, or usually it is, a, um, the contents of a placeholder in a URL pattern. For example, like this curly braces ID that I was showing just now. Okay, now that, we've, that we have the kernel, in fact, this is something we could have done earlier on. In fact, if you're really refactoring an application, that is, in fact, something that you should be doing earlier on, is functional testing, which is an, a most important part of refactoring uh, applications, because you want to make sure that it behaves, uh, that it still keeps working at every point during your refactoring um, work. Now, this is a look back at what our front controller looked like. We have this call to request create from globals, which creates a request from all the PHP super global arrays. But if you look at it, you can imagine that you can create such a request object uh, by hand, by faking all those input data that usually your web server hands over. So now it gets quite easy to write functional tests and there's two more components for that. Uh, one is called BrowserKit, which lets you handle HTTP requests, um, fake HTTP requests with a kernel. And the CSS selector that will facilitate the analyzing of your responses. So there's a simple, simple base test. Mm. If you have used Symfony 2, this might look familiar to you because that is, well, basically the same principle that Symfony 2 uses for a web test case. What we do is we have a create client method that creates a client that is part of the HTTP kernel and hands over the kernel. And now we can run the whole framework, the whole kernel, uh, without ever using HTTP. We just give in a fake request object. 
and receive a response object and then analyze that response object um, and see if it contains all the stuff, the headers, the HTML content that we expect to. And now the test case, as you've seen, I'm extending PHP unit framework test case, so I can do now all the stuff that I can do in regular unit tests. Now it's, of course, not a unit test anymore. Now it's a framework, uh, now it's a functional test, but it's still, you still have all the tools available to you. All the assertions, you have the output of, um, of PHP unit, which is a great asset. You can integrate that into your continuous integration info environment um, and so on. And the basic test process is to create a client and then issue a request with a method, get, and a URL. And this will return a crawler. And the crawler is part of that CSS selector component. And what it will allow you to do is inspect HTML based on CSS3 expressions. So it's um, almost, it supports almost the same API as jQuery does. So every developer, or most developers need jQuery, so you can start right away right, using that um, CSS selector because you know the syntax. You can do stuff like this, crawler, filter, some CSS expression, and see that it contains and the actual headline and make sure that we always get a 200 for this list. You can even test forms, selecting buttons, submitting a form uh, with some um, additional data. Again, assert that the status code is a redirect because that should, ha should be what happens after a successful form post. Uh, follow the redirects and again, check that the task that we've just created up there is in fact present now in the list. So we have a full functional testing capabilities now. Okay, so what's left? What's left is we, don't, we want to make all of this configurable. And for that, we have uh, the config component. In this case, I'm using it together with the YAML component. What it does is locating, loading, and caching of config files. It can validate config files. It can, you can uh, define valid data structures that are valid in your YAML. YAML is by its, on itself is not, you're not able to validate it. Um, in this case, you can have data structures that have valid defaults, that have validators, um, and so on. And you can even, it even provides a merging capability. So if you've used Symfony 2 or even Symfony 1, you know about those environment stuff where you can merge configuration from different environments into one final configuration, and this, config, uh, this component supports that as well. So you can really easily use that in your own legacy projects. Just, just loading the data from a YAML file is really simple. This will just provide you within, with an array, with a hash map, and um, using integrating that into the configuration parameter, uh, configuration component is not that much more difficult. Uh, again, we have a caching mechanism. Really similar to the routing uh, mechanism would be uh, you have a compiled PHP file. In this case, I'm determining the, the format of the uh, cached file myself. Um, so I won't have to always parse the YAML on every request. The config cache is created using the cache path, and if it is fresh, then I will create a new file resource, and uh, if it's not fresh, I will create a new file resource and dump the results of my YAML parsing into this, so this will contain the statement return some array, and I write it to the cache, and after that, I simply require that file, so I will always have the optimal performance for that. Okay. So there's, there's one more component that I'd like to show, which is called the console component. 
um, often you have to automate things in your application, integrate that into some kind of cron job, whatever. And uh, for that, there's the console component that will help you a lot in writing command line tools uh, in PHP. There is uh, output formatting, there's a help system, there's even interactive dialogues that you can script for, for example, for creating install scripts, stuff like that. And it's all based on a command class. It's really simple, extend a base command. And first, there's a configure method that you need to define. You can have, uh, you can define names for that command to, uh, to use. You can defi define arguments, options, flags, and so on, set defaults. And then you create a single application instance and add commands to it. For example, in this case, it's, it's, this, it's this add task command. There's a expire tasks command, which would, well, uh, remove closed uh, tasks from a database, stuff like that. And then you simply call run. And to use this on your command line, you can simply call php console php. And if you don't add any, any additional command name, it will simply uh, output the help for the application that you've just written. And included in that help is a list of the commands that you have added. Um, there's also some general stuff. Uh, you can set verbosity levels. Uh, you can uh, use output formats to, to output XML responses that if you need to integrate that with some kind of scripting that you can use more easily. And the execution then takes place in a second method called execute. In this case, I'm building a simple um, simple interactive dialog. There's, I can use a helper for that. It's, called, it's available through a helper set. And this dialog will actually allow you to um, have an interactive dialog that you can enter, that you, ha that you can set defaults for again, and so on. OK, so that was it uh, for the refactoring part. Of course, it was just a small glimpse on all the um, Symphony components. Most of all, uh, there's those three components. Each of, that, each, each of those components would be a whole talk or a whole one or two or three day workshop. <laughs> so that's why I've le left those out in this case. But form will allow you to map uh, your HTML form to your business objects. Um, security provides a really flexible security layer for HTTP applications. Validator validates stuff, of course, using, for example, annotations if you like. There's an event dispatcher that was already part of the HTTP kernel but can be used on its own as well. There's a finer, which is a um, file system as abstraction. There's a process component, which is really powerful, that allows you to easily configure system processes and call them from PHP instead of uh, handling all your platform-specific peculiarities yourself. Um, and there's more. So if you're interested in this, um, check out the documentation. That link, if you don't want to write down this right now, that link goes to the components documentation on the symphony.com page. So you can also go to symphony.com and check out the documentation for all the components. Thank you. Thanks for coming. So, are there any questions? Can answer. Yes, please. Um, is there uh, a component that uh, provides uh, functions for consuming or providing web services, uh, SOAP and REST? Um, not really. Um, because, w for, uh, did everybody understand the question? Is there a component for consuming web services? And uh, not really. And the reason for that is um, 
that the components all focus, focus on, um, on the HTTP stack, more or less. Um, so that would be a kind of external task. But um, there's Gazel. It's, it's in the, um, it was in my list of the application that use Symfony components. And Gazel, for example, uses uh, the event dispatcher from Symfony. And Gazel is a, uh, who has worked with Gazel? Lots of people, no? OK. Really, uh, check, check, check Gazel out. It's really powerful. It's a full-fledged library that is completely object-oriented API to consume web services. Uh, it's used by the uh, Amazon Developer Toolkit, for example. It's actually where it originated from. Um, so that would be the thing I'd use. Yeah. Other questions? No one? OK, I think I'm holding you from dinner. So thanks again for coming. Have a nice day.